Hi everyone. In this series of videos, we're looking at how to use the Avada Builder elements. These design elements allow you to easily add a vast range of content to your Avada site. Today, we're looking at how to use the Image Hotspots element. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. OK, let's begin. The Image Hotspots element allows you to place any number of hotspots on an image, which then trigger a popover when either hovered, or clicked, or just act as a link. Let's have a closer look at how this works. I've imported the Avada Food pre-built site here, and I'm going to add hotspots to the image in this recipe. You could use this element in many ways, but for my example today, I will use the hotspots to identify the ingredients on the image. This is actually a portfolio post, but you can add this element anywhere in your content. OK, so as we can see, this image is coming from the image element. Instead, we will use the image hotspots element here, so I will delete this image, and add the image hotspots element instead. I'll add the element here, and head to the general tab to first add my image. I'll select the same image that was there from the media library, and insert that into the post. OK, so before we look at the hotspots, let's go through the remaining options on this tab. With the next option, you can set a maximum image width if you want. Otherwise, the image will display at its full width, as long as that fits within the column it's in. Here, I'm happy with the full size image. Then there's alignment. In this case, I'll set it to center. And I will leave the next option, popover trigger method, as hover. You can also set it to click instead. Finally, there are just the usual element visibility and CSS options at the bottom here. There's also a design tab and an extras tab here. The design tab controls the hotspot animation and the styling of the popovers, but let's just add some hotspots before we do any styling here. I'll head to the children tab, and as we can see, there's already one item added. There's also this little white square showing on the image. So let's edit that item to see what we can set there. First up is the horizontal and vertical position. You can position the hotspots by inputting numbers here for both the horizontal and vertical position. Alternatively, you can drag the slider to position the hotspot, or even easier, you can just drag the hotspot around to the place you want it to be on the image. I'll start by dragging this one to the bottom here. Under this, you can add a triggering icon, but in this case, I think I will just stick with text. That's the next option, called triggering text, and here I will add the text that's going to be visible on the image. This one's going to be yogurt. Then comes the trigger action. This can be a popover or a link. I'll leave this on the default of popover and add a popover heading. In my case, this will also be yogurt, but you could have a different title if you wanted. Then there's the content inside the popover. I'll just paste some dummy content in here. The last option here relates to where the popover appears. By default, it's on auto. And if I hover over this one, we can see it loads above the image but you can also manually determine where it will open. The other options are top, right, bottom, or left. In each hotspot item, there's also a design tab, and this design tab is specific to the item you're editing. So in this way, each hotspot can be styled independently. These styling options only affect the hotspot itself, and not the popovers. The first option is font size. The hotspot titles can be as big or as small as you want, and that will of course depend on the size of your image, and the number of hotspots you want to add. For this example, I'll just leave it on the default. Under this, we can also style the text and background color, and the hover text and background color of the hotspot. I'll just style this a bit. I'll start with white as the text color, and for the background color, I'll add a partly transparent version of the site orange. For the hover text color, I'll also make it white, and for the hover, I'll set the full orange color. If you have used an icon, there is an option for the distance between icon and text you can use, and below this there is a padding option. You can use this to make your hotspots as big as you want by adding padding. And with the last option, you can round off the edges. I might just add 5 pixel border radius all around. OK, that's my first hotspot. If I head back to the children tab, we can quickly look at the ways I can create more. I can click on add hotspot point, but if I do that, it's empty and unstyled. In most situations, it would probably be smarter to simply duplicate the initial hotspot, thereby keeping the same styling, and then editing it. I want the same styling on all the hotspots, so I'll just duplicate this one to create the hotspots I need, and then edit them. 
I'll just do that and then come back. Okay, I have made nine hotspots around the image, each one relating to a different ingredient. I've also changed the popover preferred open position on most of them to suit their position on the image. To finish up here, I'll just clone one more hotspot. I'll edit it and change the triggering text to see all our recipes. And then I'll change the button trigger action to a link instead of a popover. This gives three new options. The first one is link, and here I will select the recipes page. The next one is link title. This displays on mouse over, but I don't think it's needed here, so I will leave it empty. Finally, I'll just select this link to open in the same tab. Okay, I'll also just drag this hotspot to reposition this in the middle of the others. All right, so that's all our hotspots. Let's come out of the items and look at the parent design tab. The first option is hotspots animation. And here you can get your hotspots to animate in any one of five ways. Pumping, pulsating, showing, sonar, and pumping plus showing. I'll just choose one so you can see what this does. This one's called sonar. And these animations just bring attention to the hotspots. For my example, I'll just leave it on this. Under this are four options to style the colors of the actual popovers. There's one for the popover heading background color, the content background color, the border color, and the text color. These affect all popovers. I'll just leave them on the neutral looking defaults, but you could have a riot of color here if you wanted. At the bottom, there's also a margin option to control margins around the element as a whole. There's also an extras tab in this element with the usual element animation options. These animations affect loading of the element as a whole, but I'll leave them on none and I'm done. Let's just preview this. Okay, that looks great. As I mouse over the individual hotspots, we can see the popovers and you can see them opening in specific directions. And the middle one doesn't have a popover at all, but we can see a link is active when we mouse over it. And this link would take us to the recipes page. All right, that's the image hotspots element. This could be used in a myriad number of ways. So let us know in the comments how you have used it and what you think. Thanks for watching. Okay, this concludes our video on the image hotspots element. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.